Theories are one of the biggest parts of Five Nights at Freddy's. Seriously, I've heard the word theory so many times, it doesn't even sound like, sound like a real word anymore. Theory, 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 yeah, it means nothing, doesn't it? So since theories are one of the biggest parts of FNAF, here are six Five Nights at Freddy's theories that I believe are true. There's two theories about Shadow Freddy and Rufus Fask slash RxQ slash Shadow Bonnie. These characters do pretty much nothing in the first game they appear in. But what about FNAF 3? Shadow Freddy leads the to start their destruction and Shadow Bonnie helps get the good ending. Well there's two theory there's two theories about them in the ultimate guide. One of them one of, the, one of them is that they're both past Springlock employees that feel guilty they couldn't stop the children from getting killed. So what they're doing is leading the kids staff to help free them. The other theory is that they're linked to the killer and they're either antagonists or simple warnings man remnant. I doubt that it's the latter because it's mentioned in FNAF 3 Night 4 that there were multiple Springlock failures in Freddy's sister location. After learning of an unfortunate incident at the sister location involving multiple and simultaneous spring lock failures, the company has deemed the suit temporarily unfit for employees. What's in the box? Well, Scott t kind of already told us. What he told us was it was the piece put together. But what does that mean? Well, there's a theory that what's in the box is Henry's plan, aka Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. The piece put together are the animatronics of FNAF 6, Michael Afton, and Henry himself. In the insanity ending, Henry said he couldn't die until the mess of William made was cleaned up. I could make myself sleep, but not yet. Not until I undo what he has done. Michael Afton have become a franchisee, and paragraph 4 said to salvage, said salvage the animatronics to bring them all in one place. Elizabeth Afton, William Afton, Charlotte Emily, Michael Afton, Henry himself, and Cassidy. But wait, where is Golden Freddy in FNAF 6? Well, Molten Freddy is most likely a suit with multiple passengers, and Cassidy being one of them makes sense. So all the characters were burned and sent to the afterlife, and Cass Cassidy went to torment William in hell for eternity. This theory is literally the piece put together. But back to Cassidy be um, possibly being a passenger in Multi Freddy, there's another passenger theory that she is a passenger to another character. Just keep that in your mind for now, okay? We'll get back to that. I recently started to believe this theory, just let me explain. In the FNAF 2 Maxis call, Phone Guy says, I'll take the night shift myself. Well, uh, when the place eventually opens again, I'll probably take the night shift myself. And then Jeremy quits after night 6. Then after completing a custom night, you get a paint slip that says the name Fritz Smith. This would mean that Phone Guy's name is Fritz Smith. And he did take the job as a security guard, but got fired because he knew I'd screw with Amatronics AI. But then he got rehired and killed. Maybe the Amatronics remembered him and decided to get some revenge. So this one you might think is going to be one of the more crazy theories. But if you just stop and think about it for a second, it could make it makes a little bit of sense. So this theory is basically saying Scrap Trap suit in FNAF 6, is Spring Trap and Golden Freddy suits put together. Now hey, 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 stay with me for a second, just let me explain. Basically the Spring Body and Spring Lock suit had audio lore following mechanisms that can stay in FNAF 3. When animatronic mode they were set to walk towards sound cues. So after spring locks failed, he was forced into the program since the suit locked in amatronic mode. So what, so what did Afton do after Fazer's Fry burned to the ground? Or about the, he tore apart the spring trap suit, Moronari was, and rebuilt it with Golden Freddy's suit to regain full control of himself. 
now that I think about it, it must be a little frustrating for having to follow all those audio lords. That's because the suit kind of forced them to. Also, remember I said about Cassidy the other be being a passenger and be being a passenger earlier? Well, soon the our souls linked to, to a Golden Frey suit, it could have been she was a passenger of William Afton. But as for both these passenger parts of the theories, I don't know, but I find that the Molten Freddy one would make a little more would make a little more sense. So while I was editing this, I remembered that this blueprint existed. And this blueprint shows that the characters that are part of Molten Freddy are only the fun time animatronics, which could just mean that Cassidy is in fact part of William Afton. This is one of the more recent FNAF theories. So, I used to not believe that the theory that Cassie's dad is Bonnie Bully from FNAF 4 because there was a very small, small amount of evidence. One was that Bonnie Bully and Cassie were similar clothes. Another was his favorite character is Bonnie. So what? But now there's a lot more evidence. Why would Cassie's dad be, be, be who he play as? What makes him so special? What makes you so special? What makes you so special? What makes you so special? The Faz Ranch the Vanity Mask, where those engineers while navigating the room Pizza Plex, and then Prince Quest 4, we can find a body mask. When we find it, it says it, he says, this looks very familiar. So, so the body mask is very familiar to him. And also he becomes Maskbot. And also there's a Brandon mascot on Ruin if you paid attention. Oh, there's more, um, like, Circus Baby dialogue in part of this too. Her saying she recognizes him could be Elizabeth Afton recognizing the Bonnie Bully. But who is Bonnie Bully really? Like, what's his name? Some people think that it's Jeremy Fitzgerald, but I can't really believe that theory without just a little more evidence. As a matter of fact, I actually just need some evidence because there isn't really anything that points to this yet. <laughs> Slow down there, past me. Let's go ahead and talk about a better theory that throws us out the window. We're we talking about this theory by this YouTuber, so shout out to her. This theory is about Susie and Logbook Chica slash Scrap Chica and where she would have been in Pizzeria Simulator. And there's a little bit of evidence that also that that not only goes with this with this theory, but also kind of kind of throws the missing children order theory out the window. I was the first. I have seen everything. Susie was the first. Not Charlie. Not Cassidy. Susie. She has seen everything that William Afton has done. Susie herself is a big part of Pizzeria Simulator. She appears in the Freedom Maze minigame. This theory kind of suggests that Susie did not pass on the afterlife. And still had a bit of a score cell with Afton. So she stayed behind and would have been the first night, um, and, and would have been the first night salvaged for FNAF 6. Unfortunately, she was cut. And boy, I wish she wasn't because thinking about this theory and then looking back at it, it seems like Susie has about as much importance as. Cassidy and Charlie. So I wasn't too sure about how to end this video originally, but but then I remembered this is a theory video, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it like this. Matt Pat, if you're somehow watching this video, like thank you so much for being a part of Five Nights at Freddy's and a part of my childhood as well. I'm gonna miss you, and. Uh, a lot more of the uh, and a lot and a lot of other people in the FNAF fan base are also gonna miss you, and just thank you, and please enjoy your retirement. You've earned it. Now, thank you all for watching, 
and I'll see you on the flip side.